Hi, this is Stacy with Gooseberry Bridge Farm and I am doing a video today on uh, my seed haul for the fall. I ordered the most seeds I've ever ordered in one season ever. This is Teddy, he's helping me. started with these okay so this is my whole seed order from botanical interests um, I will put a link to their site in the description you can see I ordered a lot there's more over there that was because they had free shipping and 30% off of fall seeds on Black Friday and a lot of spring seeds are also fall seeds like I think these carrots I can't remember what exactly was on sale, but their prices are really good anyway. So, and the number of seeds in the packet is more than what you get from some other companies these days. So these are carrots. Um, I really have always liked these rainbow ones. So I have two packets of those, but they're two different rainbow varieties. This is the one I've grown before, but this one looked cool. These uh, make a really uniform, neat little carrot and cosmic purple because purple things are good for you. You can tell this is going to be super fun. Okay, so then I have a bunch of spring stuff. This is all the stuff that was on sale. We have two different kinds of cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, um, Chinese broccoli, which came highly recommended. Uh, it's an easier way to grow broccoli, especially places like here where it gets hot really fast and it doesn't, um, growing ahead of broccoli is really difficult in southwest Missouri. So this is cabbage, um, nappy cabbage and another cabbage. Also doesn't grow well here, but hey, I'm going to try it and also try it for our CSA. Okay, so the carrots are done. We have this blend of kale that I bought to go with these two lettuce blends um, that will be for making salad greens and then I'll probably also add a little spinach in with those. I bought three different kinds of spinach. Um, I've always grown this one but I'm always looking to try new spinach varieties. Okay, we also got some beets that were on sale. These are just gorgeous and these are the dark red ones. Um, I like to make beet powder with these that we can use as food coloring, and these are just pretty. Oh, and we have kale, too. Kale goes with the fall slash spring crops. I've grown all of these varieties before, and these are my favorite for kale chips. The dwarf blue curl curled. These are just the tastiest. These two, they're both pretty similar in taste. This one's prettier. The seedlings are purple. I mean, who doesn't like something purple? Okay, so then we have summer veggies, pickles, or cucumbers, this variety is called homemade pickles, um, a small compact cucumber variety, which I bought for my CSA members who have smaller spaces, and this is Market More, a um, classic heirloom cucumber, and I also got these Armenian cucumbers because everybody says they're amazing. Not necessarily in taste, but that they actually grow and beat the cucumber beetles. I also got some tomatoes from Botanical Interests. Tomatoes, um, when you're growing them to sell the plants like I am, these seed packets that only have 25 seeds in them are frustrating. But that's how everybody is doing it now. Some places there's only 10 seeds in a packet. Um, and often there's more than it says, but in the last few years that's been less common. Anyway, so we have Cherokee Purples, uh, San Marganos, and pineapples, which are favorites of mine. I haven't grown a decent pineapple tomato in like three years, but I think that's because I got a packet of bad seeds from a different company, so I'm trying these. Um, these I got these patio cherry tomatoes for my CSA customers who have smaller spaces, and these bush sauce tomatoes for the same reason. They don't take up as much space. Um, but you can still grow a bunch of tomatoes and their heirlooms. And then these beefsteak heirloom tomatoes, um, I've just always 
wanted to grow those. I grow lots of beefsteak varieties, but not the beefsteak variety. All right, then we're into herbs. This is rosemary seed. Rosemary is pretty tricky to start from seed, but I've done it before, so here we go. We have cilantro, dill. This is tetra dill. I like this one because it is uh, very bushy and um, lots of leaves, not so many flowers, which is handy for both the butterflies and making pickles and things that you need dill for, or drying dill. I um, didn't really need to order this. I found that three grams of dill seeds is, I bought a packet last year and I didn't, I just didn't know how much I had left and um, turns out it was like thousands and thousands of seeds. So we're good there now. Um, this is English thyme, which I've not grown. I've mainly grown wild thyme, so I'm happy to try a new variety. I'm still going to grow wild thyme, though. All right, and then in these other seeds that I bought are for flowers and cut flowers. Some of them are cut flowers, some of them are just for fun. Some of them are for cut or drying. The Dusty Miller I grow mainly for drying. It looks amazing in wreaths and things like that. Okay, what's next? Let's go with spring. These are spring. Um, nope, that's a marigold, so that's not spring. These must be the cut flower pile. I'm not even sure. Anyway, fever few um, herb. It is medicinal. You can make a tea for migraines with a perfume, but it's also a good cut flower. Marigolds, um, African marigolds are the, the big ones. You can see these are 24 inches tall. Those are yellow. I wanted a yellow variety, so I'm trying those. Uh, Bells of Ireland are a cut flower thing that I've never grown, and I'm just trying it because they had these seeds and they were pretty cheap. Um, Snapdragons, I have tried all the cut flower varieties that everybody talks about, and I tend to like these um, just tall mixes better, so I'm trying that. Sweet Annie, first year growing this, but as you can see, it's good for wreaths and drying, and that's something I really like to do. Love in a Mist, a Nigella. Um, this is a new color that I don't have, so I mainly grow these for the pods, but the flowers are pretty to look at in the meantime. The seed pods, which I guess I should show you on here. Let's see, like kind of this one. This one's not a bud. This is a seed pod. They don't even show what the seed pods look like. I have some right here. Okay, these are dried nigella pods. How cool is that? And now that I pulled them down, they're hanging above the table. There are nigella seeds all over everything. So all these little black seeds are. But these were from pink and blue flowers. And now they're everywhere. These that I ordered are white, mostly with a little bit of purple, it looks like. So, anyway, we have straw flowers, which I usually grow the ones from the cut flower seed companies, but these look fun. I really like the bright colors because these hold their colors completely when they're dried, so it's fun to have all the colors. And same thing with status. Status holds its color really well, and when dried, um, and I want all the colors, so I'm trying some different blends this year. This one's the cotton candy blend. So then we've got this pile of flower seeds, which is Coral Fountains Amaranth. I'm not really sure if I needed that, but I, um, I bought some anyway. I had some from last year, and Amaranth kind of is just going to come up everywhere after you plant it once. That's what my experience has been, but the... Um, this one I definitely want more of. I'm probably not even going to plant the red spike varieties because I've planted them on purpose the last three years. And orange, um, amaranth, hot biscuits, I believe was the variety. But I've ordered those, or planted those last three years on purpose and then had them also come up in other beds and in the aisles and like literally everywhere else. So, and I just let them grow. So I might as well not plant them on purpose. Okay, so marigolds. I grew these gem blend marigolds last year. The flowers are tiny. They're like this big and they're adorable. And they grow really like bushy but kind of low. It says 8 to 12 inches. None of mine were really 12 inches. But they made a bush of marigolds that smelled really strongly of marigolds, which is what's supposed to help with bugs. Um, these are French marigolds. So they're small flowers but big. Um, same idea. I'm going to plant those in the garden and um, probably put 
put some of these in my pollinator garden shares for the CSA. Along with these, these are spider flowers. They are uh, wonderful for pollinators. They last in a vase for a cut flower, but they are thorny, so you don't really want to cut them. It hurts. Um, this is a vining milkweed butterfly attractant, so I'm just growing it because it's beautiful, but it probably won't grow. And African daisies. I've never grown these for seed before, but they're beautiful. So I'm going to try it. And they do make a good cut flower. I also have some Cosmos. Just kind of restocking my basic uh, single Cosmos. And we have some, these are more Snapdragons. These are a six to eight inch tall, um, short potting or bedding plant variety. So those are for fun. And we have poppies because I can't help myself. I said I wasn't going to grow poppies this year. Here we are. This is a bread seed poppy. And so is this one. And these are Icelandic poppies, so I was, I am going to grow those, who am I kidding? Um, last year didn't work, so this is their last chance. I'm going to try them. They're good for a cut flower. Good. They're fair for a cut flower. They're beautiful, but they don't have a long base life. Um, these are grown for the seed pods. So these seed pods, where the regular po Shirley poppies, the seed pods are about that big or little, um, these will be big and funky looking. So I'm trying those, Hungarian blue and peony poppies. I don't know where I plant them, but the bees also really like them in the spring. They bloom relatively early. Also got some Coreopsis. I've grown this one for years um, and then I didn't grow it last year and then I learned that you can use it to dye fabrics. So now I got two Coreopsis to use for that. They also do pretty well in the base. Um, even though these flowers don't last that long, the, the other buds that are cracked will open in the vase and they make a fun little uh, seed pod when they're done. Okay, we're moving on to Baker Creek seeds that I ordered this year, which is a very small pile. There's some things that I needed to restock. I still have a lot from other years of tomatoes, but I wanted to try this variety, Missouri pink love apple. The Black Beauty we've grown for years and years and the seeds were five dollars which is ridiculous um, but once you've tried them you can't ever not grow them so here we are. Uh, new, new cherry tomato variety. I get a lot of requests for an orange cherry tomato so I decided to try this Sun Gold Select and we have a Blue Beauty. It's another one kind of like the Black Beauty. Once you grow it you can't ever stop. These are also really nice because unlike the Black Beauty, which is a little darker, these aren't actually solid black. They have red on the bottom, usually, where these have less of the black on the top, but they, um, and these are more pink inside and these are a little more red, but they don't crack. The Blue Beauties don't crack, where the Black Beauties are super prone to cracking and sunburn. The Blue Beauties um, usually look pretty. They don't crack as bad. And I also got some mortgage lifters because... It make you know everybody likes a big giant red tomato or at least I do okay we have just the Johnny's portion of the order left I'm gonna start with the um, cut flower seeds that I've got for this year which these aren't the only things I will grow but they're the things I needed to replenish so I got mixed queen lime zinnias these um, this creamy yellow giant dahlia flower and I'm going to try to put the pictures of these on the um, screen since they don't have pretty artwork like the um, other seeds we just looked at. So we have the Oklahoma series which those are the small zinnias. I got them in uh, solid colors this year or color, single color packets. I didn't get all the colors um, because there are some like red and yellow that I am just tired of after last year. I've grown mixes every other year and they, um, they you just always end up getting some more of something in the mix. But I did order also really big packets of these because I know I can grow the same from the same packet for at least three years because I've been doing that with my other seeds. So I got 500 of each color. 
and that's one, two, okay, maybe I got this ivory one I have less of, but 250. Anyway, most of them I have 500 um, each, and that will last me a good uh, couple of years or so, depending on how many successions we do. So I also got uh, Benary's Giants, I got Carmine, the orange, the white, because I never have enough white zinnias, the salmon, rose, and lilac, and deep red, and golden yellow. So I'm going to show you what those are, um, what those look like on the screen. I didn't get all the colors because it's expensive to buy single, um, single colors, so I just got the ones I wanted instead of a mix. It ended up costing a lot more, but I think it'll be worth it since I'm pretty committed to growing them at this point. The other thing I'm going to do with these larger packets, and I will show you right now, is try to select seeds for the um, doubled flowers. So not all, I mean, some of the, the seeds that are the seeds that are flatter like this could be from a double flower or they could be from a single flower. My fingernails are really dirty. But these skinny seeds, which you can actually see most of these are the skinny seeds, which is really exciting because these definitely came from a doubled zinnia. Even that one probably, but these flat ones could have come from a single or they came from the layer with the petals. So it's just pretty fun to be able to increase your chances of having doubled fancy plants flowers because that's what we need when we're growing cut flowers. So I also have this stack which I believe is spring um, cut flowers varieties. The Gloriosa Double Daisy Rebecca is my all-time favorite. I will show you a picture of that from when I've grown it before. Sahara Rebecca is pretty and I haven't had a ton of luck with it, but I'm trying again. We have two varieties of Feverfew. I cannot remember what this one looks like, but I'm gonna show you. And I grew this one last year and it was gorgeous. And two more colors of status. Like I was telling you before, I really want those new colors of status. This one says forever happy, it's the name. I mean, how could you not grow that? And apricot. Um, I also got the Raspberry Rose straw flowers because they looked pretty. And this giant packet is for the pollinators. It is a, um, it's called Bee's Friend. I had no idea. I was ordering what looked like the most economical packet. It's massive and it's full. It's like a quarter pound of seeds. Oops. I've done that a couple times with Johnny's because they get cheaper the bigger, the more seeds you get. So sometimes I end up with a lot really important to pay attention. They always say on their website and on their packets how many seeds per pound and they usually are sold by the packet or 250, 500 or they start in on ounces or in some cases pounds. And here we are with a quarter pound of this. But I have a field I can plant some of it in too. And the bees love it. We have bees. I'm gonna reach across here. Okay, so now we are on the last seed order of 2023. Even though I ordered them in 2022, and that is sunflower selections. So this is the best, most economical way to order large amounts of pro-cut single stem sunflowers. These are pro-cut reds. I did not get as many of them. This is 500 pack. Um, they're beautiful. I will show you a picture of each one as I show them. Then we have Pro Cut Brilliance, which is really just like a regular, um, regular looking sunflower. And I, these are big packets because they have a thousand seeds. And the Pro Cut Orange Excel, um, those are kind of normal looking sunflowers too. I grew both, grew both of them last year. And then we also have Pro Cut Lemon, which is like a lighter yellow, and Pro Cut Plum, which I grew this year also. And it was very popular. For bouquets. So I will show you pictures of those here. And I'm looking at my table. I don't think I have any more for this year, but I am going to get these organized into these um, seed sorting their photo out photo boxes. I have five of them now. Only three of them have seeds in them. 
and two are empty. So I should be able to fit the rest of my stuff. I'm probably going to end up with two for cut flowers and three for vegetables. I might end up with a whole box full of tomatoes, but I will show you how I organize them um, after that is done.